back and I'm going to try to stop saying, uh, all the time. I feel like that's a bad habit I've broken into recently and I'm going to squash it right now. Okay. Back at Amazon, we need to find the reviews. So just a quick recap. If you haven't watched the first video, please watch it. We got pages into a list. We have headers to kind of trick Amazon into thinking that we're actually not Python. And we figured out how to get actual HTML data back from their service using Python. And we converted all the data into a soup object. And as I mentioned, beautiful soup is a great library for parsing tags or structured data. So we have our soup. Now, how do we find all the reviews? And as I said, the reviews on this page will look the same as the reviews on this page will look the same as the reviews on this page, meaning they all live in the same kind of HTML div layout structure, whatever you want to call it. So how do we find this? Well, it's a little bit tricky. What do we actually want? We want we want the stuff in this section. So the way I do this is, is I kind of zoom out. I, I take a really broad look at the page. Then I hit Command Shift C. Actually, no, I'll, I'll just I'll just highlight part of it. I'll right click and I'll go to inspect. When I go to inspect, it'll bring up the Chrome DevTools panel and I'm in the element section up here on the top left. Like we have console, network, elements. We have so many things. So now we have to figure out what, what div holds all the reviews. This is how I do it. You could look for individual reviews. Oh, here it is. Like, you see these little divs here? These correspond to actual reviews, right? So first review, second review. As we keep going down the page, we can see we're going to find these. Now, you could, so Beautiful Soup, you can say, well, find me anything, any div having a class of A section review, A OK relative. And I could do that. I could definitely do that. Maybe I will do that. I don't know. On the other hand, maybe I want to say, well, let me get the, the element that has all the reviews in it, and then I'll, I'll look for the individual reviews within that element. And sometimes I like to do that because if, if I first identify the parent container, I, I know that I'll only find these within the parent. Now, if you're saying, what the hell are you talking about? Okay, let's just do it this way. So I know I, I just want to get these, these reviews. So let's, um, what do we have? It's a div and you're going to understand why I'm saying this in a moment. So it's a div, the, all these IDs are different. So of course, HTML IDs, they should all be unique. That's the point. Uh, data hook is review. So I'm interested in the class name here. So I'm going to copy the class name and I'm going to tell beautiful soup to find me all the divs, find all, I want a div, and I want them to have the class name of that. So I'm gonna say reviews is equal to that. So how do I know if this work? Now we have 10 reviews per page. So I'm gonna say length of reviews, 10. Okay, so you know what? I feel confident. I'm going to say these are all my reviews. So I've got 10 reviews and it's a list or at least it, it, it lets you uh, kind of inspect the, the, the property of how many things are inside of it. Um, so let's just look at the first one. And this is, you know, we need to figure out how to actually scrape this now. So what I like to do is instead of actually looking at the individual HTML and, and finding the things we want to scrape, I like to go back to this thing and start digging into it. So, okay, they're, they're all kind of the same. They just repeat over and over. They're, they contain different data though. So let's crack open the first one. And okay, so now within that div, we're in this div, which is a review card. And I'm trying to find like information. So you see, as I, I highlight over things, it still shows me the div. So I'm just going to keep like moving my mouse down. Okay. So here's something, uh, worth every penny. That looks like the review title and okay. So here's the stars, right? So what are the stars? It's a, it's a link having a class of a link, normal, a link having a class of a link, normal. Okay. 
So if I take my first review and I say find a link having a class of that, well, there I go. I actually got it. So just to, to back up a little bit, right? So I found all the reviews. I'll go to my first review. And within that, you see, like, this is a list of beautiful soup objects. So on each of these beautiful soup objects, I can call more beautiful soup methods. And the only methods that we're interested in today, for the most part, is find all or find. And then that returns another soup object. So just to really hammer this point home, I'll say for R in reviews, because they're all this, they're they're all just soup objects. Um, print R dot find. Okay, so it, and let me actually print a little space after it. So now we have these ten uh, review objects. Damn it, I sent uh again. Okay, come on, Jeff, come on. So notice that the r.find, it's looking for a link, which is an a tag, also known as ahref, class, a link normal. It's still like, I'm trying to get this into like a, a format I can use for later. I, I don't need all this HTML stuff. So the thing you can do here is you can call the dot get text method. The get text method works on most beautiful soup objects. So now we actually have a way to start thinking about getting the data. So it's 5.0 out of five stars. So great. So I'm just gonna get rid of this loop and I'm gonna go back to kind of iterating over our, uh, our data. So we have a strategy for getting, whoops, too many parens. Okay, so we have a strategy for getting the stars. So let's make a little helper function, right? Let's say get stars. And I'm going to pass in a soup object, and I'm going to return the result of the find method on the soup object. And you know what? We'll, we'll just say, let's add some exception handling. A lot of times with web scraping, just things will go wrong from time to time. So you, you want to build your code in a way that lets you handle exceptions off the bat. Um, and we'll say, you know, except exception as e, you know, print e for now. You don't want to do that. I, I see a lot of people sometimes they do this. Don't do that. If, if you know you want to skip over the exception, that's fine. But if you're actually writing lots of functions that, and that like broader parts of your code are going to depend on it, don't, don't just pass. Really try to figure out what's actually happening. Just, just, just the tip. It's fine if, if you legitimately do want to pass over the exception because you can't avoid it but it, it may mean that something fundamental is happening that you need to address in your code. So for now, we'll just print out the exception. And look, one thing when you're doing this in Jupyter Notebook is when you write functions, a lot of the time, you'll forget to, to change the, the function variable to the variable that you're doing work with. So, you know, I could have left, and I've done this a million times, I could have left review zero in there. And it, it just, you know, yeah, it works great. It's always returning the same thing though, you know? So uh, just be careful. Sometimes it's good to like restart and run it fresh after you've written a lot of code or slowly migrate it to a script so you don't, you know, ruin your whole project here. So let's make sure it works. So we're gonna get stars on reviews. And I'll just get for the eighth one. Aha. Uh -huh. What did I screw up? I didn't return <laughs> the result of find on the soup object there. So, okay, well, 5.0 out of five stars. Um, well, what if I wanted to return an integer? I guess, you know, I could say this is the, this is the review string, right? And uh, sorry, I'm trying to work with limited space here so you can still see big font return review stir zero and I guess I could say cast it to an int if you wanted so it's a five but let's not overcomplicate things let's just return the string for now we can always handle it later we could always parse it out later so now that we have a plan and, and we have a strategy for getting the stars maybe if you're following along at home why don't you practice why don't you try to get the um 
to get this big thing, get that piece. That's what I'm going to try to do in a second. So if you want to pause the video, take a crack at figuring out how to kind of apply the same reasoning, take our list of reviews, try it on one, use find. And why are we using find, by the way? So find all is when you know you have a bunch of these things and you want to get all of them. When you know you only have one of them on an individual soup object, you just use that find. Now, what if I used find here? It would have just returned the first one. But since we have 10, we need to get them all. So now let me find the review text. So let's go back and I'm just going to inspect that. And it's in a span. And okay, so it's in a span having this class. So it's in a span having that class. So I'm going to say reviews dot zero find a span with a class. And you, like the nice thing about beautiful soup is you don't have to be like a genius to use it, right? Like I'm I'm using it pretty simply here, uh, not like super hardcore. Um, it's using literally after creating, I'm using two methods, find and find all and get text. So three methods. And I guess find and find all are kind of similar. So maybe it's one. Um, damn it. I said, uh, all right. Uh, fuck. All right. We got, sorry for the curse. Uh, <laughs> I know. Okay. We found it. Let's make a little helper function here and we'll call it define get review body and it'll take a soup object and I'm just using soup obj as kind of a generic uh, variable name and I'll just move that down a little bit back here so I'll say uh, the body is equal to the soup object find and I'll just return the body for the time being and we'll try it out make sure it works then we'll add our exception handling and I'll just Try the second one. Great. Now, don't forget that I, I just want to return the text. I don't care about the actual HTML here. So bada bing, bada boom. And we can probably clean it up. Like you see these new lines. Maybe we'll go in there, strip, clean it up a little bit. Okay, so then I'll add my exception handling just in case we need to do that later on when we're parsing thousands or you know, more than one example at a time. And I'll just catch the exception, assign it to E and print E for now. Okay, so that's kind of the strategy for grabbing that stuff. Maybe we'll do one more real quick. What's another important thing? We got the stars, we got the body. Maybe we wanna get the date that it was reviewed so we could just click on that we can inspect it and looks like it's a span again having a particular class so it's a span having a particular class so just for the sake of uh, being expedient here i'll say get review date it takes a soup object again it's a span still a span we're just going to swap out its class bada bing Bada boom, and I'll say, I'll just call that date. Maybe that's a bit of an overloaded term. Maybe give it a good variable name, review date. I don't like that, review body, right? Review body. And again, renaming variables in Jupyter is dangerous sometimes. So now if we try to say get review date, and I say reviews dot two, whoops. We'll just try the third review. Name body is not defined. There you go, coding in Jupyter. Boom, review date. Make sure your variables are aligned. Okay, reviewed in the US on October. So you, you kind of get the pattern now. You, you figure out how to get all the individual divs. So this is like, you know, just for the sake of being super repetitive, like 10 divs. And then we use one at, one at a time just to test out and each one is a soup object. You could do whatever you want with it. It has find, it has find all, it has get text. And the general pattern is, what is it? Is it a div? Is it an A tag? Is it a span? Is it something else? And how do I identify it uniquely? Usually it'll have a unique class name. And then you call get the text, you do miscellaneous cleaning on it, and you're good to go. So try to get, 
try to get everything you want. In the next video, we're gonna kind of put it all together and prepare it to write out to wherever we want, be it a CSV or whatever. So I'll see you there, folks.